very much. Namaste, uh, sir. I'm uh, most welcome. Most welcome. Thank I invite, you. Yeah. Um, thanks, sir. Uh, Professor Ramon Rav is also there. He's joining from uh, his office uh, uh, from Andhra Pradesh. Oh, great. <laughs> Good morning, Professor Sarvi. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> Fine, sir, sir. Thank you. Uh, then I think we will start, sir. We will start because uh, it will take maybe um, five to seven minutes time for uh, formal introduction and other things. Uh, so, uh, on behalf of uh, Mizoram University, on behalf of uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor of our university, and also on behalf of uh, UGC HRD Center, uh, Mizoram University, I welcome uh, all the participants to, uh, to this uh, one-day workshop and uh, my special thanks and my special greetings uh, um, are due to uh, uh, Professor K. Ramon Ravgaru and also Professor G. Sorel. And uh, these are the two eminent speakers uh, who are going to speak uh, um, on the theme uh, that is uh, uh, this is this workshop is uh, about uh, motivated, energized, and capable faculty. I think this is a phrase we have taken from uh, uh, the NEP document 2020 and uh, chapter 13 of uh, NEP 2020 deals with uh, the motivational aspects of uh, teachers in higher education institutions. And uh, I really appreciate our HRD center for uh, choosing this particular theme uh, because uh, there are many seminars uh, uh, happened and many conferences happened on NEP 2020, but most of uh, the seminars, uh, they focused on uh, the, the technical aspects of uh, the NEP, but this is one kind of human aspect uh, and, <laughs> and human factor because we are all in the process of implementing NEP from this academic session. And uh, we all know um, the document may be very great, but still uh, for effective implementation of documentation, any, any type of policy initiative for that matter, in case of higher education institutions, it is a teacher who plays a, a, a central and crucial role in making uh, the policy initiatives uh, successful. So, uh, so I really appreciate uh, the HRDC director uh, uh, Professor Robin, uh, you know, for, for selecting this particular important uh, topic. And actually, we uh, more than 100 people, they, they have shown interest uh, uh, to participate in this uh, uh, one-day workshop. And at present, I think uh, uh, there are uh, more than 30 uh, participants uh, joined. I think I, I'm, I'm expecting some more participants would join in this workshop. So without taking much time, uh, uh, first, uh, um, I'm, uh, I, I, I once again welcome uh, Professor uh, G. Sorrell and Professor K. Ramon Raugaru um, um, for uh, sparing uh, uh, their time to speak on uh, this particular topic. And uh, uh, um, my department, uh, we felt that these are the two uh, right people um, to address on this particular issue. And uh, um, um, earlier also, they spoke on this uh, particular theme in different universities, including uh, our own um, university. Uh, and uh, the participants they gave uh, um, uh, very good feedback about uh, um, I know their uh, inputs and uh, their, about their, um, their their suggestions and really uh, their uh, um, um, I think uh, um, uh, personally also I would say that uh, I'm one of the beneficiaries of my association with uh, uh, Professor G Sorel and uh, Professor K Ramon Ravgaru and Professor G Sorel uh, um, uh, he recently retired from uh, uh, ML Sukadia University of Udaipur. And earlier, um, he had served uh, our own department, the Department of Commerce, uh, Mizoram University, as head and um, uh, professor. He was the founding head of the Department of uh, Commerce in Mizoram Central University. He served that university in, uh, in 2004 5. Um, uh, so uh, he, he also served as uh, the president of uh, the largest. Uh, a professional body of uh, um, accounting academics uh, in the world. And uh, then uh, I, I would like to give a brief introduction about uh, Ramon Ravagaru. Um, and I know him uh, from the days of 1980s. And uh, I need not read his uh, CV because I know about him very well. 
and uh, he started uh, he had started his career in 1982 in vrs and college uh, uh, chirala it is a small town in andhra pradesh uh, but that was a uh, that was one of uh, uh, great um, um, academic institutions in the state uh, at that time and uh, uh, when uh, when he joined uh, um, that college uh, as young faculty member i was a junior most faculty member uh, uh, i joined in that uh, uh, college in 1985 then uh, professor ramon rao moved to andhra university in 1989 as reader and he became professor of commerce and management studies in andhra university and that was his, uh, his alma mater also and uh, he became professor in 19 98, I think. And then uh, uh, he superannuated technically. He retired from Andhra University very recently, that is in 2020. But you know, for a real teacher like him, there is no retirement. And he proved that uh, by serving uh, the entire uh, state, uh, Andhra Pradesh uh, state, uh, taking care of uh, the needs of higher education institutions. Now, we, now he is the vice president of uh, um, Andhra Pradesh State Council of uh, Higher Education. So um, just now, I just asked him how he spent his uh, uh, brief uh, summer holidays in Canada. Then he mentioned that uh, he did some academic, academic work there, and he visited um, um, Stanford University there. I think uh, he's going to tell us what he did there. And uh, this is one thing which I liked about uh, our two eminent people. And uh, they, they know how to motivate themselves, and they know as teachers, they know how to energize themselves and they know how to engage themselves. So only a motivated teacher has capacity to motivate others, maybe their colleagues and also their students and scholars. So with this very brief introduction, and I think there are other things uh, to mention about uh, um, Professor Ramon Rao Garula in terms of publications, he has more than 100 uh, research papers and uh, he produced uh, more than 30 PhDs and uh, um, uh, and especially is a well-known figure um, in the field of commerce and uh, management and uh, his book, um, uh, he authored one uh, uh, textbook published by Pearson that is services marketing and uh, um, uh, he's a very popular author uh, in the field of commerce and management and uh, more than 10 research projects uh, he completed um, uh, in his uh, uh, tenure. So with this uh, very brief introduction, now um, I'm, I'm leaving the space to Professor Ramon Ravgaru. And uh, our plan is like this, and he's going to deliver his lecture for one hour, uh, followed by interaction uh, with the participants. And uh, the participants, uh, they are unmuted. And uh, uh, I request the participants uh, to, um, to, type, to, to, to provide their queries or their observations in Q&A chat box. And, uh, after Professor Ramon Rao's lecture, and uh, uh, we will take up some of the questions, and you would like to interact with uh, the participants. So, with this uh, um, uh, brief introduction and uh, a welcome, welcoming uh, 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 a speech, and uh, now I request Professor Ramon Rao Garu to take over. Yeah. Good morning, all of you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Jyoti Kumar, uh, your colleague Professor Martendu Singh and the HRDC uh, section of Mizoram University, Professor G. Sorrell, uh, the other resource persons, and my dear uh, participants. First of all, I am uh, very happy uh, to interact with the faculty who have some uh, contributions to the societal development through their uh, valuable interactions with the students. The theme rightly chosen, as mentioned by Jyoti Kumar, NAP 2020, really considered to be a game changer in the entire uh, higher education system. Am I clearly audible? Yes, sir. Screen is it visible? Is. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, fine, fine. I'll go ahead. <laughs> So a lot of uh, good efforts uh, have been taken place uh, in uh, the design of uh, the national education policy. And one important uh, and key area, which is, of course, recognized uh, centuries ago in India, that the key and core competency for any educational institution is the teaching staff. 
so without the teachers qualified competent energized motivated teacher group no institution can occupy the higher position or uh, can be recognized and uh, say respected by the entire uh, community so if any institution university or college wants to get recognized globally they should have a team of motivated energized capable faculty so as rightly mentioned by jyoti kumar we will uh, focus on this for one hour after that there will be an interaction session so my presentation today will move on these issues so i believe that the drivers of the teacher development is our skills and competencies of the teachers teachers having relevant skills relevant competencies that these two give self confidence to the teachers only self confident teachers will get motivated to teach to contribute to the academic field so self confidence is very important and for that they should continuously upskill themselves and build relevant competencies so what are the key issues for that one is learning teaching learning abilities second as uh, yes, all of you know that we are now in 21st century and education 4.0 industry 4.0 are directing us to make technology intervened into teaching learning and evaluation processes worldwide the phenomena is going and we have to get ready for that third important thing and which the nep very seriously emphasized and ugc has been doing it for quite some time is ensuring learning outcomes the objectivity in teaching learning process is very very important goal setting and goal achievements are very very essential then the fourth important issue is teacher personality developing a teacher personality fifth is skill upgradation sixth is work life balance and seventh issue is positive and effective teacher engagement by the institutions so i believe that these are the areas which we need to discuss uh, to support the theme that building a team of uh, motivated energized and competent teaching faculty so let us focus on teaching learning abilities first the first important aspect is finding and identifying modifying and say matching to the requirements of the course curriculum and the students is choice of a teaching method we know right from the childhood we have got exposed to one kind of teaching method very popularly used is the chalk and talk approach so we can't imagine a classroom without a blackboard or a green board or a white board even today if we are driven to a room and one side if you don't find that board you don't feel like it is a classroom so that much conditioning we got it but worldwide say for centuries even today it is identified as one of the best methods of teaching learning process even in top business schools we find the green boards not one board we will find multiple boards so they won't wipe anything on the board starting from the class to the end of the class they will change the boards and they will conclude by getting into board number 1 and board number 2 number 3 number 4 number 5 number 6 like so that kind of uh, approach is followed and which is considered most effective let us not uh, 
say discount that method it is an excellent method to go by and what are the new methods that are coming up with a lot of refinements one is experimental learning methodology so the experimental learning methodology limits the classroom teaching and drives the students to the practical sessions in sciences we have done lot of uh, say uh, experimentations practicals in engineering practicals are a part of the uh, teaching learning process but in social sciences we have limited application of experimental methods but greater application is for experiential learning making student connect to the situation and make the student experience the situation and learn from the situation so how a teacher can create an experiential situations to the student say you can create experiential situations within the classroom outside the classroom by making the students connect to the beyond the teacher to the groups to the situations then learning is possible so experiential learning is considered to be one of the best learning which can have a lasting impact on students take for example if the students are taken to a industrial tour even after 15 years and 20 years after completing the program if at all anything to be recollected they recollect the tour experiences that is the impact so if you can integrate experiential learning in our teaching learning process in our execution of the the syllabus that we have it it will have a greater impact then participative learning this is also a very old method but practically when we get into the system is practical participative learning is happening every teacher says that we give an opportunity to the student to raise the questions either any time during the class or some teachers drive to the last part of the presentation or last part of the teaching uh, the engagement of the session as question hour session but frankly speaking very few students will raise questions and the same students will rise in all the sessions not the rest of that means almost 95% of the students never try to raise questions and uh, uh, say expose themselves they don't have enough confidence to raise the questions so question answer session is only one part of participative learning you can explore so many other things so participative learning is not a dialogue but need not be a dialogue between teacher and the student so how you can make a student thought process connected to the thought process of the teacher how you can connect the flow of the content with the students continuously without any break the effective listening from the student side itself is a participative learning so if you make the student think continuously in an active process that becomes the participative learning process so i suggest to many faculty members whenever i interact with the faculty development programs see we are in a semester taking one hour sessions nearly 60 if you leave with the examination other things apart at least you will be having 40 teaching sessions for the let's say arts and commerce management maybe 30 sessions for sciences and engineering so at the end of the program or at the end of the semester if you ask the student 
to speak about five statements of the subject. How many students will give five relevant correct statements on the entire course table? Maybe five percent again. The the advanced learners, ninety five percent, they do not make any one statement, though they have some broad idea. The ambiguity is there, so they cannot make some statements on that. So my advice to the teaching faculty is that when you are going for a class, taking for forty minutes or sixty minutes. In the content that you develop, at least make three or five statements, which you insist the student to learn that, understand that, record that in the mind. So, number of times you have to repeat, and the system, say for example, if there are forty sessions, forty into five, there will be. Two hundred statements on a course paper is a great learning. Even if, even if it is three statements, three sentences, if they if they, if they learn, that even becomes hundred and twenty statements on a course paper. It is a big learning. So we are not making the student or showing the right path to the student to participate in the process. we are trying to make them emotionally connected to the time that we are spending in the classroom so this is one way you can make the student recognize the statements whenever they are proceeding in the session so you can give distribute those five statements or three statements in the beginning of the session so every student will be having those five or three and they are trying to make note of them that is one thing then you can make certain blanks given a 10 or 15 learning points from the class let the student fill the blank when the session is going on so throughout the session they should be attentive to find out the thing after that class you can collect and you can show, see how many students could catch the right words at the blank place spaces of course you have the seminar group discussions role plays wherein the students will have greater participation in that so that is so participative learning is an important uh, method that we have to implement and adopt blended learning is a model the ugc as well as all the regulatory bodies nep emphasizing because of uh, the facility technology facility that is being created now so many online teaching resources learning resources from the best of the best in the world are available to the students now we have to integrate them in the teaching learning process to have an extended learning to the student to have a, a, a different kind of understanding from the student and to have some questions on the learning process that is also an important element then gamification this is also we are doing it quite for quite some time in a very very limited way but now you have technology interventions so many games are created for learning of various course materials so games are again make the student participative in the process the experience in the process so the two kinds of things happen with gamification and another method which are very very old method but uh, continuously considered very very strong uh, say impact uh, creating method is storytelling say many of us believe that storytelling is limited to school children as say when you are handling higher education is it a, a right method to go for it 
but all the time the child is always present in everybody we are attracted to the story so we are attracted to the entertainment industry if you look at every time we we wanted to take the the presentation in a story model so we have gone through number of stories right from our childhood and what the purpose of a story that is the key element the purpose of the story is given at the end that is called narrative of the story that will be one sentence only and on one sentence people build up a large story say you if you directly make a statement of that sentence students may not take it that effectively but if a sentence is followed by a story then people learn many things of it so we have to look at how to develop a story so if you go for a critical analysis every story will have a beginning and in the beginning what happens you will try to confine to a few variables eliminating all other variables so the characters and the scope of the entire subject is defined in the beginning of a story then you try to create a drama interactions between the variables and the outcomes of the variables either positive side or negative side and you are trying to make a connect and flow in such a way that there will be some kind of suspense some kinds of movement from one stage to another step by step logically and every outcome is beyond the expectation of the audience a learner a teacher unfolds every logic and makes the student understand the logic and finally narrate it to the outcome so the entire organization of the episode that really creates an impact on the student to take the one point Point one, point two, point three, four, or five life. So, one method may not be sufficient for dealing the entire course. We may need to pick up the right methods or combination of the methods, depending upon the scope of the topic or theme that we are interacting with the students. That is how we have to move on. so now we got the technology element in teaching all of us experienced it during covid period all of a sudden we jumped into online teaching learning process we had many challenges students have many challenges and the challenges led to lot of frustrations and now of course we are thinking that the pandemic uh, seriousness of the pandemic is over and offline programs are now on every institution wanted to leave this technology element and get into physical classroom interactions with the students but this is only a temporary phase the changes that are taking place in the world particularly in the employment market we have started the education system yes knowledge creation and dissemination system for quite some time in the country or in the world for that matter educational institutions focused on knowledge creation knowledge dissemination but during the last century we can call it particularly the the latter part of the last century and the present century the all the educational institutions and the entire educational ecosystem of the world started connecting the education to the jobs the employment connectivity became the core principle 
placement record became the viable performance measure of the institution and we have slowly jumped from the knowledge creation base knowledge dissemination base to skill base job readiness base and now several decades went on very well now time has come again that this kind of approach is going to say create serious problems to the education system because the environment is changing according to an estimate in another 2 years 60% of the present job positions will vanish so majority of semi skilled unskilled jobs will be performed by the machines the gig economy is coming up gig workforce is coming up so there won't be any long term employment the employment roles may not be there so what is there the people will find project to project temporary skill based employment so one has to become a knowledge uh, personality then only they are they can pursue a career on one hand the life expectancy is increasing that you have to find a career for at least for 50 to 60 years and this kind of changes are happening and we don't know after 10 years what kind of system would be now the nep 2020 is making us to go back to the roots and try to create a develop the educational institutions as knowledge creation and dissemination centers so for that now technology came on handy so we have to use the technology to economize the student time and to expose the student to variety of resources and also to provide greater choices so we can now customize the le- teaching learning process to the student he can pick up the teacher he can pick up the course he can pick up the time at which he has to do he can pick up a place where he can do so lot of personalized teaching learning process the technology is facilitating so the teachers should become a tech savvy personality that is another important aspect and we should know how we can engage students student engagement is a very very big issue you can engage a student while he is in your class or she is in your class for certain time but a student is getting exposed to a an environment in your institution for more than the class hours they will get exposed to hostels they are exposed to canteen they will exposed to the the uh, uh, say playgrounds they are exposed to library they are exposed to uh, say many other uh, places where you, you, your institution is possessing how you can make every part of the institution a learning environment to the student so that while they are doing it they can also get engaged in the learning process directly or indirectly so i visited recently the stanford university in san francisco and i could see i say there was a canteen in the school of management and the in the canteen many students are sitting and taking uh, the, the food items and there was an electronic display board a huge electronic display board and in that display board there appears around 500 plus english words and every word ends with ly on that day another day you may have another set of words ending with another letters so the students i observed 
who are engaged in having the 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 stuff food stuff they are observing the board and trying to find which letter they know which word they know which word they don't know and immediately they are opening their soft smartphone and looking at the meaning of that you see an environment is created the purpose for which student has gone to the canteen is also served and in the process they are also engaged in learning process like that there are many ways through which we can engage student continuously on a learning path see exposure to the situations making them experience the situations is only half the story another thing is you have to make them how to interpret those situations and those experiences and what are the learnings they have to register out of it that is the role of the teacher so student engagement is one big challenge one we have to make it teachers should go for a self assessment it should be a continuous process say one year you may be regarded as a great teacher and another year you may not be but uh, but the ego system will continue unless you go for self assessment 360 degree feedback not just a formal feedback collected by your ipsc you should have your own feedback system through peers through students through other resources whenever you got a chance try to have the feedback and again you should decide on which areas i should get feedback so key touch points that you have to identify and try to see collect if not regularly at a, at a different time intervals whenever opportunity comes look for 360 degree feedback teaching beyond syllabus it is real responsibility of the teacher we should go beyond the curriculum and see nowadays the students are having greater access to the resources and whenever you, when you when you start uh, say describing the topic of the session immediately they are typing on a google search and trying to find out what it is so they are trying to have more learning on the issue then you should be much more uh, as a learning personality then only you can command respect from the student so you have to always compete with that by taking the student beyond the curriculum so that the thought process can be initiated creative thinking can be uh, say ignited and you can make a student as an advanced learner by taking them towards that shaping the behavior is one of the key responsibilities of the teacher and this requires a well structured teacher personality with a character so many students imitate the teachers in the classroom outside the classroom also and if we, if we say to ourselves we have the impact of our school teachers our college teachers and we learn many things by imitating them so that is why you have to shape the behavior and you should emerge as a leader in knowledge in the respect to discipline so for that you should be a continuous learner and you should get exposed to right learning that is the important thing otherwise you have multiple sources now and if you go on opening up every source you will not end up anything so identify the right sources and try to acquire the right kind of knowledge so this is these are the issues that make us effective in teaching learning process say i told you technology has to be applied in your teaching learning process these are various ways that you can use the technology as an intervention in the teaching learning process powerpoint presentation of course we all know it so interactive classroom interactive sessions now the interactive technology has come you can 
open up the world to the students and that is one thing connectivity beyond the classroom this is one thing that teachers have to practice so we should uh, be accessible 24 by 7 if not directly but indirectly let the students connect with us whenever they find an issue for them you can answer at your convenience that is a different story but open it up make the students feel free to interact and connect uh, this the faculty and now the the whatsapp group or other uh, social media or the electronic media that you have it that can be used for that the most important development now is the e content development and e content sourcing every faculty member should learn how to develop e content the four quadrant approach that is available has to be made this further makes your teaching personality more effective it is definitely not an alternative not a substitution it is a complementary process so your time spending in the classroom can be economized can be made precise can be pointed direct if you have the e content support for your teaching learning process so you can make the e content developed so lot of uh, resources are available you need to have a training on that get exposed to various softwares available and you have to train yourself how i can make a audio visual presentation to the student you need to know the acting the expressions the movements the body language the dramatization the pitch pause analysis the screenplay the visuals the sound systems and the brevity the time you see in a classroom we can uh, say capture the attention of the students for 1 hour even 90 minutes but in a audio video visual in e content say if it is more than 5 minutes you cannot draw, draw attention of the students when microsoft recent study what is the attention time of the youngsters today they found it is only 2 minutes after 2 minutes they are uh, uh, trying to switch over to another uh, another aspect another uh, thought process they are getting so the whatever e content that you develop make it smart make it small make it effective make it as an audio visual and with a relevant effective sound system dramatization action all those things need to be say included in the e content development so we need really a special training on that we don't say that you are already great say classroom teacher effectiveness and effectiveness in e content are not the same it is altogether a different one online tests and evaluation can be conduct conducted through technology online counseling can be conducted peer group learning can be done connectivity to learning resources is possible videos virtual labs games case studies can be done through technology you can record your class lectures live and also upload to the students for future reference you can also get the feedback from all the resources including students whomever you identify as yes these are the people they should give me the feedback so this is what you can do with the use of technology we should focus on learning out so these are the list of graduate learning outcomes one is 
we have to ensure that disciplinary knowledge is given to the student and student learned it. So, so far in majority of the institutions, by majority of the teachers, whether we have provided disciplinary knowledge or not, that was the concern. So we are only addressing a 25% a, a of the issue. The 75% of the issue is whether the students have really learned the disciplinary knowledge or not. So you have to pick up the right methodology to connect with the student to see that the disciplinary knowledge is really transferred to the student. Communication skills. Communication skills should not be interpreted as language proficiency. This is much, much, much more than language proficiency. In a way, it addresses the entire behavioral model of the student. How to interact with the student, with the other persons, the interpersonal, intrapersonal factors need to be learned by the student by the time he comes out from the institution. So there shall be formal and informal exposures, learnings. So you should see that your entire interactive process with all will be observed by students and that should become a model. So by the end of your interaction with the student, they should have the communication skills in your course, in your discipline. So every discipline and every course will have its own language. And the student must be capable of communicating to the others in that language. Management has a language. Marketing has another language. Finance has another language. Accounting has another language. The, the organizational behavior has another language. So every course paper, every discipline will have its own language and communication should focus on that. You should make the student understand the concepts well and must be capable of using those concepts in the right perspective in conversations. Critical thinking is an extension of the box level thinking. A formula-based learning. Most of the textual stuff is formulated model. We establish the cause and effect relationships. And we try to communicate to the students that if these are the causes and these are the outcomes. Now a teacher has to drive beyond that. So different combinations have to be the choice of the student to think about. Developing relationships and connectivity with unrelated objects. So the teacher should instigate the critical thinking process by driving the students to a different kind of situational environment to come out with a new level of thinking. Problem solving abilities, this is one 21st century uh, skill requirement. The students must be capable of solving the problems. In management, we use case study method as uh, one of the uh, very, very effective problem solving approaches. Now you have many others. Gamification is also one of the problem solving approaches that we can use. Analytical reasoning. Research related skills, we should also import research related skills to the student and we should have research skills first. And then only you can make the student think in that direction. Teamwork, how the students will understand the, the team requirements, team ecosystem and do accommodate themselves towards that scientific reasoning, reflective thinking, 
digital literacy self directed learning multicultural competence I, i need not explain all these things because you are already well known of these things if you have any questions on that you, you, you can raise say, at the end of it moral and ethical awareness and reasoning leadership readiness and qualities and lifelong learning so we should ensure the student acquire all these outcomes by the end of the program so we have to integrate in our teaching learning process all these so that directly or indirectly the student get exposed to them and we should make the student recognize that this is the leadership quality this is a moral and ethical learning this is the teamwork requirement this is called scientific reasoning this is called reflective thinking this is the language that you should make them so that they understand the situation well and they develop their own personalities we should de develop an evaluation system of course uh, the nep 2020 suggesting that you should introduce uh, reforms in evaluation system unfortunately majority of the institutions may be 90% plus they are driving the students towards examination system only examination driven learning systems this is unfortunate examination is only to ensure whether learning system happened or not but we are making the students and conditioning the students right from the childhood only keep the examination pattern in mind and then do it so testing should be a part of teaching learning process and should happen in such a way that it is a way of life of uh, uh, learning so we should focus on student centric evaluation system forget about semester and examinations now many institutions have realized that we should focus more on continuous evaluation and continuous evaluation should be student centric outcome based and there must be some methods through which you, the student can test himself or herself technology is making it and we should also measure the progression of the student again use technology and see that how the student a slow learner is transforming as a advanced learner in which subject exceeds slow learner in which subject exceeds fast learner and how you can make a student advanced learner in all the subjects all the courses that is also an important aspect whatever evaluation system you design it must be transparent and you should have a provision for grievance redressal so developing a teacher personality a teacher should be a trainer what training the teacher give to the student the training is on learning methodology the difference between what in my experience i am telling you the difference between a slow learner and an advanced learner the principal difference is that the learning method even if you look at the the social system some communities emerge as advanced learners some communities uh, are still are very slow learners because uh, the advanced communities they are having the learning methodologies right kind of learning methodologies right from their childhood inherited from their parents brothers and sisters and neighborhood and in socially disadvantaged sections they are not exposed to such systems they go on uh, understanding self evolving systems and learning process that is why they became slow learners so the teacher's job is to make the student find out the right method of learning say if you look at the accounting or mathematics or statistics the student if you give a 
problem without informing or training a method of solving it, the student gets confused. If you give the method, the student immediately resolves the problem. If the student do not understand the method properly, he will commit mistakes. Until that person learns the method properly, he go on committing mistakes. Once the perfection has come in the method of resolving it, he will immediately do that. So the principal personality character of a teacher is the training ability of the teacher. So teacher should be recognized as an excellent trainer. That is the personality. Teacher must be a good communicator. A good communicator, the test is that the receiver will get whatever the sender wanted to transfer. The perfect transfer from the sender to the receiver, once that is achieved, he is called as an effective communicator. So here, receiver is a student. You are a source sender. And when whatever you thought of is reaching every receiver, you are an effective communicator. So it is not easy. It is not as simple as I told you. Over the years, you have to work on improving yourself the communication skills because on the other hand, the source groups change. So many dimensions of the source group changing. So the student group of 10 years back of the same program for the same course paper is not the same today. Their level of understanding, their interests, their goals, their objectives, they're all different. Accordingly, we have to differentiate our communication skills. Then only you can connect yourself, yourself with them. So it is a continuous process of making ourselves as better communicators in the classroom. We should have a passion towards teaching and learning process. So it is not just a job, a mechanical job, so you can never be a, a good teacher if you treat it as a job. A teacher must be able to enjoy teaching, able to drive satisfaction out of the teaching, and able to get a lot of energy out of delivery of the process. Then only you can be good at it. So your personality characteristics, you should have passion towards teaching. Many of us may not be taken up this profession as a choice. Very, very few might have uh, got into the profession as a choice. And majority of the teachers in the country, I believe very strongly, they got into this out of compulsion. Because that is the job available for us at, at a point of time. But many people who joined like that became very effective teachers after they have learned the key requirements and transforming themselves as the right personalities. So passion is an inside emotional activity which we should develop it. Empathetic. We should understand things from the student point of view. So always we should be empathetic on their teaching learning process. And we should work out our presentation, our interaction, our connectivity through that process. And you should have a model character. People, as I told you, observing. You should be presentable. See, as like uh, any time, any say I'm a teacher like you should not be there. You should make yourself a presentable a formal, uh, say, presentation, neat presentation, because the students have to see you for a longer time. You should also be good at it. You should drive creative thinking. You should have creative thinker. People look at you for advancement in thinking. Look at you as a change layer. 
So that is another uh, characteristic that you can develop. Punctuality and time management. This is one very important thing. I'm very happy that exactly to the time Jyoti Kumar started this program. I, I love it. All through my career, I try to, honestly, maybe 95% of my sessions started to the time. And also I take care closing it to the time also. That is my, my this thing. So punctuality is one thing that the student learned from the teacher. Time management is another aspect that we have to focus upon. So I will tell you how the time has to be managed. So you should become a counselor, a progressive thinker, sensible and responsive to the situations, to the problems of the students and academia. So these are all characteristic features. Please check yourself. If you have all of them, it is your great. If you don't have some of them, try to make it up. The skills that are required, we should focus on that. Teaching skills, anyhow important. Digital skills, much required. Then uh, social skills. It is very important. The teacher must be good in social skills. You should have friendly relations with the management, with the colleagues, with the students, with the neighbors, with the society as a whole. So these are all skills which you need to build. They, they don't uh, get inherited in you. You have to sharpen them. Administrative skills, UGC says that one has to spend 40 week hours, 40 hours in a week in the uh, institution and they should take the responsibility of some of the administrative activities. Leadership skills, networking skills, transaction skills and research skills. I, I would like to focus on research skills. Many of us uh, uh, do MPhil and PhD. And our target is to prepare a thesis and submit the thesis, await for the results. One results have come, we got it. But we have, we never, or many of us do not try to interpret. While doing research, what kind of skills I need to acquire, whether I have acquired those skills or not. That is for the purpose only this uh, slide is designed. So research, help us to develop learning skills. What is relevant, what is irrelevant information, you can categorize only when you have research thinking. So many research scholars waste their time if they don't have the right kind of learning skills. So what to learn from an article? what to learn from a book, where to focus on, what to capture. This is what you have to acquire during your research period with the guidance of your teacher. And from the research guide, you have to pick up this. Developing analytical skills, how to analyze a particular situation, a particular issue in different dimensions. What are those dimensions? How those dimensions change from time to time? What are the advancements in analysis that is taking place? You have to continuously upscale your analytical skills. So what are the technological, methodological support that we have in analyzing things? You have mathematical models, you have statistical models. So many things, uh, econometric models, so, so many things are coming up that uh, to the analysis. So you have to check in your discipline relevant analytical skills, I got it or not. Improvement in writing and presentation skills. Thesis writing and presentation of the facts in a systematic, logical way and in a presentable way. This is a skill. Project design skills. So while after completing your thesis, you must be capable of designing a new project right from the preamble to the conclusion, outcome, expected outcomes, everything you must be capable of uh, designing it. 
skills of drawing inference and concluding a problem with a solution. This is another important learning that you should have from research. Investigation skills, where to start? What are the key points of investigation? Why we are identifying those key points? And what are the outcomes that we, we are expecting, whether outcomes are really achievable or not? What is the limiting factors for us? How you can go about investigation? What are the resources? Those things we have to make it. Differentiating relevant with the relevant facts. And most importantly, a researcher should learn the diagnostic skills, problem definition, identifying the crux of the problem and working towards it. So these are the research skills that are expected from a, a, a research degree holder among teaching faculty. Let us see this work-life balance, which is very important for having motivation and energy inside. So we have to address the personal needs, family needs, occupation needs, relationship needs, and social needs. These are the five important needs for which we have to allocate sufficient time. If you allocate disproportionately this time, then the life balance will not be there. So personal needs are acquiring new knowledge, meeting to health, uh, physical fitness, health related issues, and the entertainment for yourself. These are all personal needs. You have to allocate sufficient time to the family, wife, children, and time spending with them together. And you have to find out what are the needs of them, how I can address those needs. Occupation needs related to your job, your performance, what all we have been discussing that comes under occupation needs. And this requires a time allocation. Relationship needs, unless you have relationships now, the life becomes very, very, say, disappointing. So what kind of relationships we have to maintain and how much time we spend on that? Then social needs, neighborhood, society, connectivity. So these are the needs for which we have to allocate time and work strategically in it and try to satisfy every need that you have in these five categories. Then you can have work-life balance. When work-life balance is there, you are a stress-free individual. A stress-free individual can have right kind of thinking. When you are satisfying everything in a systematic way, in a designed way, you will find ample time for improvements in that, developments in that. You will have very less problems emerging and you have a system which can support you to resolve all those problems. So you should allocate the time and also you should ensure that the time that is allocated is productively used. This is exploiting the potential of generating value for the time. This is another important aspect. So you should have emotional connectivity and inclusion in satisfying every need that you are identifying to achieve the teacher teaching and personal life balance. Emotional leadership with students and peers, you should have student connectivity, expert connectivity, peer connectivity. You should work on building trust and building relationships. Be right always. Think right, do right, practice right, promote right, recognize right, reward right, and teach right. A teacher should be a righteous personality and the entire society expect a teacher to be a righteous personality. That is why all these rights are mentioned here. You have to integrate teaching and learning process. Whatever you have learned, learning is multidimensional. 
and learning happens in every moment of life even while you are teaching in the classroom you can have learn so the exposures the teacher is having in fact the the most effective teacher and effective teacher the difference is that this integration so understand the methodology of learning of the students develop stress free teaching learning methods you should not create stress to the student you should not get stressed out plan the process meticulously meticulously execute it effectively learn from mistakes introduce changes involve students and involve yourself in the process develop performance indicators for yourself collect feedback and review your performance periodically so this is another issue what do you need to do always learn unlearn relearn learning of course is a continuous process you have to continuously update yourself otherwise you will be stale and outdated unlearning now became a very important aspect say we have certain constructs in mind a student should be like this that is why always we criticize the current batch of students comparing the old batch of students comparing your student life that we are better students than the current batch of students because you have some fixations in mind some constructs in mind and you are comparing with those constructs and you are not satisfied with the existing you have to unlearn those things then only you can learn the current situation the present situation you can understand them and connect yourself with them so unlearning became now very very important because changes are happening at a very very fast pace replacing the earlier ones and the environment is dynamically changing so one important habit important skill that we should have is how to unlearn what we have learned certain areas you have to relearn relearning is finding new meanings new understandings new interpretations new applications from what we have learned in this so you have to re examine things re engineer things and you can have new interpretations new applications you say new uh, say uh, thinking thought process generates out of what you had already in you so these are the things what i believe the institutions have to do develop a quality learning ecosystem in the institution to make the teachers motivated energized and capable of making learning ecosystem to the teachers to the students both are important so you have to discuss with the faculty identify their learning needs and design an ecosystem which meets all of them promote socialization and friendly relations now we are looking at interdisciplinary multidisciplinary transdisciplinary learning process so if the individual departments connect with other departments other faculty members within the department with with other departments and develop friendly relations social relations uh, say it is not possible to motivate the faculty to yourself encourage participation in the institutional development process let every faculty member every stakeholder for that matter part of the the institutional development process ensure transparent and effective governance people should believe that they are supported by government governance but not uh, controlled victimized by the governance system so you have to see that such governance system is exist develop infrastructure and support systems very important without right kind of infrastructure developed and support systems given to the teachers you cannot expect them to perform the best of course the teacher can excel without any support but the present day system 
you cannot exploit the potential of the teacher to the highest level without having right kind of support systems for them. Empower faculty, let them work freely, happily, take the decisions and become accountable by themselves. That kind of empowerment is required. Recognize and reward the faculty, that kind of system you make it. Let the teachers get motivated by understanding the best performance. Adapt fair and transparent teacher assessment system. There must be a teacher assessment system with a very fair and transparent methodology evaluation process. And finally, ensure employee satisfaction. Employee satisfaction means that you have to meet all the relevant needs of the employee to the system. You have to understand what are the needs. You have to understand what are the changes that are happening in the need system. And every time you should make facilitations to address those needs and ensure that those needs are satisfied to the satisfaction of the faculty. And if possible, make the faculty delighted with exceeding expertise, with the performance of the organization, exceeding the expectations of the faculty that is much, much, much more as a required aspect. So I conclude here, a teacher, Again, I am emphasizing is the core competency of an institution. Besides say, considering it as a job, you have a greater social responsibility. You have a responsibility to the size of your class. Say, for example, 62 students live every year. Every year, the number of students you are handling, you are influencing their lives, their careers, through that you are influencing uh, the global social and economic system. You are a key person in the society. So we have to imagine ourselves much better a personality. That is why everybody called teaching is a noble profession. And we should lead a noble life and we should stand examples for the others to emulate our lifestyle, our personality characteristics, our vision, our creative thinking, and our performance. So thank you very much. Um, thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, uh, you are within the time. Uh, but uh, as you mentioned, uh, punctuality is important in uh, beginning the lecture. But for, but for a for a teacher like you, conclusion uh, you need not conclude uh, punctually. <laughs> you can extend also actually. <laughs> so we received a lot of appreciation from uh, many participants, and uh, they enjoyed your session. And uh, it looks like uh, you emphasized on the basics of. Uh, teaching learning process and the basics, basics of doing uh, research. Uh, but we all know that basics are, uh, fundamentals are very much important. Um, whatever may be the, the new initiatives of the uh, governments and fundamentals, uh, and, and we are very keen to stick to the fundamentals. That is very much important. And, and as teachers, if we adhere to these fundamentals, then you know making some improvements and making some innovations is always possible thank you so much sir and uh, um, uh, listening to you is also a source of motivation to me personally and uh, uh, um, before uh, handing over to my colleague professor bartendu singh and uh, i just want to take some advantage by asking one or two simple questions and uh, we all know that 80% of uh, burden um, is uh, on affiliated uh, colleges right. in any state. And uh, uh, the, the, the national, uh, nationally important institutions, they are not taking care of more than 15 to 20% of uh, the students. And uh, the NEP is also focusing on uh, uh, most of the changes. Uh, um, uh, it focuses on uh, uh, colleges because colleges have to make so many changes and uh, 
they have to offer uh, four year uh, degree programs and research programs also and uh, research plays an important role and uh, there would be internship uh, um, in every semester and uh, we need to learn as teachers uh, uh, to handle the students of other departments and the multidisciplinary approach is uh, one important uh, um, feature of this uh, NEP and uh, um, we all know about the importance of demographic dividend and all these things and rightly you pointed out that uh, teaching is not a job but it is something like a profession or mission but at the same time student um, the colleges uh, especially colleges and for that matter even state universities um, they are not getting the required support from the government's concerned uh, minimum things like the filling up of the posts and you know now we have different type of teachers and sometimes i feel uh, um, i feel uh, guilty also i feel very sad when i see different uh, nomenclatures there are guest teachers there are adult teachers there are part time teachers and uh, uh, but you know in terms of workload uh, um, all are sharing uh, the same type of workload though teaching is a noble profession i think uh, um, because now we are you are at the helm of the uh, efforts as a policy maker taking care of uh, the entire state and uh, um, I, I, I try to say something about what uh, the governments need to, need to do to, to strengthen uh, the teacher in the uh, in the institutions, higher education institutions. Sir, Professor Dhoti Kumar, you have rightly pointed out the situation is almost similar in all the states. Uh, no state is an exception. And uh, the faculty positions are uh, vacant in large number. And uh, many of them uh, entered into litigation, court litigations, and they are unable to fill the positions. <laughs> See, my, of course, government efforts are there, support is need to be given, everything is very clear. But uh, my thinking process is a little bit different. We have to again unlearn the situation. We wanted a, a defined structural system, which is having all the elements to perform things in the way that we are want, we expect. So this thought process is an inherited thought process and we wanted to see that is the best system. Now that you have different other sources of uh, teaching learning process, the institutional, non-institutional learning process are coming down. The permanency of teaching positions may not be there and need not be there. See, so far it, it worked out that the teacher without uh, industrial experience or uh, the, the practical experience, the career, entire career passed by. And the, the industry people without teaching experience, without uh, having a sound knowledge and basic fundamentals, they also started completing their careers. Now the competitive world emerged in such a way that unless these two get integrated, things may not turn up in the right way. So we have to see the fundamental mistakes are committed, whether it is a guest faculty or a part-time faculty or the contractual faculty, faculty is a faculty. You must have taken the right person into it. But they have compromised seriously, because they are available at a lower price. So the, the commercialization element that made the institutions to go for low-end quality people who are satisfying the qualification mark, they engaged them. If they engage really competent persons by paying competent salary or remuneration for them, if not permanent, we would have seen a different kind of uh, environment in the educational system. So what I believe is now time has come. You have to reduce the classroom interaction with the students. You have to minimize the classrooms. You have to make them exposed to the real world. You experiment with them. 
So we are uh, conventionally thinking that we should say transfer bundle of knowledge to them. So many course papers, so many topics in each course paper. In an elaborate way, we wanted to transfer them. But actually, whether transferring is happening, not happening. We are satisfying ourselves. We are satisfying the, the system, but not actually the, the receiver. So why can't it be a few learning things systematically, empathically, and totally, and ignite the learning system in the candidate, in the student, to acquire relevant or more knowledge. That process we have not understood because we have a system defined in mind that that is the best system. Mm -hmm. That is where I am talking, the unlearning process is very important. Mm -hmm. So you have to redefine the entire education structure and system. And where the permanent employees now became a hurdle and a limitation to the system to move on. But of course, now it is the time to redefine the institutional learning, self-learning, and mixing these two, that is, of course, uh, the, the, the real essence of the NEP 2020. That is why they are promoting academic bank of credits, yeah. credit transfers, yes, yes. and uh, the, uh, the, the apprenticeship embedded uh, degree programs. Internal, internalization of uh, education. Yeah. System. All these ideas came uh, to uh, make the system unlearn the existing system and relearn the thing. Yes, yes, yes. To go for a new new system of uh, uh, education in the country. That's your point. Um, thank you, sir. Thank you, um, uh, Professor Bartendu. Uh, you may pick up uh, some questions. Here. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, I'm supposed to take up the questions posted by the participants in the session. Uh, I found uh, this lecture very informative and very clear from each each of the slides, each of the points were very, very clearly mentioned and you explained all those points very well. Uh, I uh, Actually, many points I noted for myself and I will try to practice like uh, one thing you told uh, that... Uh, for getting feedback from the students, if we give some uh, fill in the blanks kind of statements and let them fill those blanks during the lecture period and after that collect it and get the feedback. Uh, uh, that I never tried. <laughs> it never come to my mind also. Uh, some other things I used to do, but uh, that kind of feedback what I can get from this uh, fill, up, fill up the gaps uh, may be very interesting, sir. So I'm going to adapt it uh, for myself. Gamification. Uh, may not be possible for all papers, but uh, we have to think of that uh, to incorporate gamification to uh, storytelling kind of thing. That actually I practiced storytelling. Uh, tell a story, the, the same text converted into a story. It, it, it more students are more relating with those kind of things. So those things uh, very well you highlighted, sir. Learn, unlearn, and relearn concept uh, is also interesting thing, and we all have to do all faculty members. Actually, we have to, we are me to do this learning, unlearning, and again, relearning. So that's a continuous process we have to go further with. Uh, one question uh, posted by uh, Subrat Royaji. Uh, he uh, posted a question that similar type of writing is seen in the answer sheets in online mode. How evaluation becomes rational? <laughs> uh, that is that is the practice that we are also yeah. observing during this uh, <laughs> COVID period. Online exams and very similar examples, uh, very similar things we are seeing. So, if if sometimes I feel when answers are correct, it is difficult to identify. But when they commit same mistake, all forty students are committing same mistake. So that highlights something. So that that actually creates a question on the evaluation process. So what is your take on this? Yeah. See, one of the disease in the evaluation system is the malpractice. We want similar answers is not a problem if they are right answers. 
<laughs> if they are wrong and copied the, by all, that becomes a problem. See, uh, I do believe that examination system should not be a surprising one. Should be connected with the learning outcomes, and you should test. Students should very freely go for checking their learning system. Say, for example, you are testing the creative thinking. Then the student mind application and all that we have to give sufficient time, and also the ways in which they can present their creative ideas in that. If whether you wanted to make it a concept testing, concept testing definitely a fixed. set of answers would be there so you can go for mcqs for concept testing i say you have a reflective thinking you wanted to test then descriptive mode descriptive mode wherein whenever you want to use descriptive mode you should make the student to think beyond such a thing some already defined solution or defined answer is not available so then only you can identify whether it is copied that differentiated when you have already a text material available and when you want them to write in a descriptive mode the text material so all the people will pick up the same or copy the same or make it out so we have to change the kind of evaluation that we are making the method that we are adopting and the style that we are using to see that the right outcomes are assessed for every question you should have something in mind what i am going to test out on this that is the kind of i think we are not very serious as far as framing the question papers and all that uh, uh, we we have to make a different kind of uh, question paper setting uh, to see that right things happen but of course this, technology is making some problems as far as uh, controlling the malpractice is concerned so we have to see that technological adjustments uh, to see yeah. that the copying is not sir what about this open book system because when students have to write their exam from home then uh, people would suggest that uh, it is a it is a it is a test for the uh, teacher actually not for the uh, students <laughs> and uh, Uh, and we need to change our, um, our, um, our way of teaching also so that uh, let let it be open book system at least in case of certain papers it is possible so that uh, um, the, the the students analytical skills uh, would be tested and uh, they should be given uh, option to um, refer the books also otherwise also they are doing it uh, um, illegally uh, so um, this this thing i think we need to do something sir the open book system is tougher than uh... Uh, the the present system. In fact, see, yeah. they have to spend a lot of time in picking up the points and then writing them. It's very difficult. The time anyway, every examination will have a time limit. Yes, yes, yes. So open book system is okay. See whether it is an open book or something. Whether the student would able to identify right answer to the question or not. Yes, yes. that is say when source is there you need not to memorize things you can go for the source and take it what we are doing now we are not memorizing everything if we know the right source immediately we are referring it and taking the content for the situation that itself is a learning that itself is a skill but we should make sure that whether they have understood the content correctly or not through mcqs or through blanks through true or false statements we have some methods of testing them so the teacher developing mcqs uh, true and false this is, takes a lot of time they have to involve into this and they have to comprehensively cover the entire concept in that uh, say uh, tricks are there uh, to uh, say drive the student to some kind of confusion or with other statements so that clarity 100% clarity on the answer has come or not also can be tested so so many ways are there through which we can test evaluation system needs huge reforms yes yes yes, yes. and so many techniques and methodologies have developed so far and need to be developed also taking into consideration the environment in which student is writing examinations 
So you cannot arrest a student in a class examination hall and ask him to write the examination in mm. future. In future, that won't happen. So definitely, you have to make the student uh, have a free uh, area and the kind of uh, say value system you are injecting them that should make it. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Don't bother about the twenty percent or thirty percent deviants. Let them get marks. They don't fare in the market because. Now jobs are not uh, connected with the marks that yes, the yes, students yes. get in the examination. So the value system, if you inculcate in the proper way, student himself rejects it the copy system. Yes, sir. Yes. That is how we can address the problem. Um, thank you, sir. So, Pooper Chandu, please conclude now. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, sir, one more question is there uh, in the chat box. Uh, it's not very clear on what exactly what point the question is. The question is reading as uh, government institute teachers, teaching faculty may follow these all. But question in private institutes, faculties, a big doubt. Uh, the reference point is missing exactly for what uh, he's asking, but uh, the, the, the sense, the idea is clear on this way, sir. Ownership of the institute doesn't matter if the teachers are good. So <laughs> thing is, private institutes are not engaging right people and government uh, institutions are engaging right people into the teaching fraternity, So which need to be corrected, really. The policy has to be evolved to see that all educational institutions are equipped with quality, right-minded teachers. Okay, thank you, sir, uh, for your response. We got only these two questions. Uh, uh, but the presentation was very interesting, sir, and this interaction also was very good. Uh, your, your, your take on uh, thinking out of the box, thinking, uh, devising new things in uh, teaching and evaluation was actually very appreciable. And uh, what I feel, sir, in last two years, actually, we have started thinking out of box. The box is now open and we are going beyond that during this period. <laughs> And uh, actually, if I share one example, last year, I saw one question paper from some of the department of BHU Open Arts in the University. And uh, it was only two question, two line question was there, set a question paper uh, covering whole of the syllabus and answered the same. That was the question. Uh, uh, and then I started thinking whether uh, preparing question paper is tougher or answering that paper will be tougher. And I started thinking that uh, the main question will be, setting question paper right. because unless you cover whole of the syllabus understand it difficult to set question paper so that, that kind of thing some innovation we have to bring in our evaluation and teaching processor uh, so sir with uh, this uh, i would like to conclude this session we are having one more session after this and we'll start it at 1 30 uh, at 1 uh, and professor g soral will be addressing that session and uh, before ending, sir, uh, a lot of thanks for uh, sparing your time with this uh, very good uh, interaction. Recently, I attended one more session from you in our refresher course. That was also very interesting. Uh, the, the, the way you express yourself is really appreciated. And uh, for participants, uh, uh, Professor Jyoti Kumar has already introduced it well, and many of you must be knowing Professor uh, K. Uh, K. Ramohan, sir. Uh, he has supervised 29 PhDs, he has supervised 9 MPhils, uh, he has written 11 books, he has published more than 90 research paper and I'm telling about nearly one year old data, so it might have crossed 100 now. Uh, he has completed 13 research paper uh, projects and uh, he is a NAC assessor and different capacity as NAC team, he has visited more than 40 uh, institutions of higher education. Uh, he is a recipient of ET, non, uh, uh, ET Now National Education Leadership Award as best professor in marketing in 2013. And uh, from state government of Andhra, he got, uh, he was presented state best teacher award in 2015. And presently he's engaged as, uh, he's ser serving as the vice chairman and the state council of higher education. So, sir, with this, uh, on behalf of uh, HRDC, on behalf of Department of Commerce, Mizoram University, and on behalf of all the participants uh, who are participating this, in this program, I say thanks to you, and uh, we expect that in future also uh, we will get your time for such programs, sir. Thanks. Thanks a lot, sir. Sure, sure. sure. Nice. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much, sir. Um, nice of you. So nice of you. So, dear participants, again, we will meet exactly at one o'clock for next session. Okay. By uh, you try to use the same link. And uh, thank you so much. And uh, special thanks to Professor Vice Dean Vasulu. I am. Uh, I'm happy there are some senior faculty also interested in this particular topic. And uh, okay. I couldn't okay. recognize some of the senior faculty. So, uh, I, special thanks to senior faculty. Um, you know, for your presence here. Thank you so much, sir. Namaste. Nice. Namaskar. 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 We will meet at one o'clock, sir. At Professor one o'clock, sir. We will meet at one o'clock. Namaste. Namaste.